Hi, I'm Christian. And I'm Vera. And in this episode, we're going to talk about four things we would not change on our Land Rover Discovery 3 and 4. Hope you enjoy the video. I'm waiting for you. Yeah, well. And it's cold here. So I got the fuel burning heater running. So let's sit inside the mall crawler. Good. Uh, I wish we would have Australian temperatures. <laughs> You think they can see us? I'm not sure. Item one, which we would not change on one of our two discoveries, air suspension. We would not want to change means we would not remove the air suspension from the vehicle and put in coil springs, okay? I'm not talking about modifying it. It's okay to modify the air suspension, but to remove the air suspension out of a Discovery 3 or 4 and put in coil springs is the biggest sin on the planet if you do that. <laughs> I know there are a lot of people who will disagree with me, especially those of you who already done it, but trust me, after I'm done lecturing, you will rethink your decision, that's for sure. Because the air suspension in this vehicle is absolutely one of the greatest features it has. And I know it's a troublesome system, but it's mostly diagnosed wrong. When this vehicle has any kind of a fault, it will result in the air suspension lowering down. And that's the reason why people get annoyed, annoyed that much, that they will actually remove the air suspension and put in coil springs, okay? But it's not a problem of the air suspension. It's a problem of the ECU Whenever it has some kind of a fault that it thinks, oh, I better get that vehicle in limp mode and I'll better restrict the engine power so that the driver doesn't do anything stupid. That's the problem. And that's in general one of the biggest problems of a Discovery 3, indeed. That is why it's not a Toyota, okay? On a Toyota, it will still run if two cylinders are gone, one wheel missing, one axle seized up, no brakes left, no lights on, and the electrical burned out completely. It will still go. A discovery will already stall when it just feels bad that day. <laughs> if it got a bad hair day, it will stall. If just the air doesn't breathe right on a particular day, it will stall. That's the difference. Basically, you have to look at the air suspension as if you would have an airplane crash in front of you, okay? <gasps> an airplane crash can have multiple reasons if the airplane has some sort of a problem you know it might be the pilot being drunk it might be i don't know some birds flying into the engine it might be all kinds of stuff and it will always result in an airplane crash and with a discovery any kind of reason like that it will result in basically the vehicle lowering down but there's no reason to remove the air suspension that's all we have to say about that I don't think so. <laughs> I just started. Yeah, okay, now I got to explain why the air suspension is so absolutely great in this vehicle. The air suspension assures that this vehicle has no matter what load condition you have on, always the same ride height. That is an incredible feature. So you can pull a heavy trailer, three and a half tons with a construction equipment on it and basically max out the Stützlast on the rear trailer hitch you can have also the vehicle loaded on the axle fully and it will still maintain its height no matter what you do with it it goes that far that if you have to back into a trailer and the trailer height adjust doesn't work you can lower the vehicle down back up under the trailer and raise it back up to pick up the trailer the second big feature is you can lower the vehicle down to get in and out Maybe I should have said, you can lower the vehicle down to get into tiny parking garages in the city. So Especially it, here in Germany. Yes, it drops down below 1.85 meters in height when you put it into excess height. So that enables me to get into my parking garage at work. The, the third big reason is, of course, when you go off-roading and autobahn driving, you can adjust your height depending on your usage. The vehicle actually lowers 
I think we tested this in another video yeah. on your car. Yeah. The vehicle actually lowers when you go faster than, what was it, 160 or something? Yeah. Some... On the Autobahn, it will lower down. It tries to get a better connection to the road by lowering the suspension down until you drop below 120 kilometers per hour, then it raises back up to regular ride height. I think this is absolutely incredible. And when you go 200 with this thing, it is glued to the road, basically, for such a big SUV. I really believe the air suspension is a big part of that. The other thing is now, if you go off-roading, you have the possibility to raise the vehicle up. And that gets you over obstacles, which you would normally only get over with a raced vehicle. But then you would have to drive your raced vehicle on the road with all the downs. It is a buying criteria yeah. for a Discovery 3. What for? So for a Discovery 3 or a mall crawler. <laughs> of course, the air suspension has some flaws. There is no doubt about it. For example, that you can't, without modifications, you can't keep the air suspension raised up in the giraffe mode when you go in above 45 kilometers an hour. And, and that sucks. But there are ways to modify this relatively simple um, using the Gap 2D tool or an X lifter or something like this. Um, it gives you the possibility to manipulate the ECU of this system and then it will stay in elevated position even at higher speeds. One of the biggest misperceptions out there is that this air suspension is not reliable. That is absolutely not true, okay? Just so you know, you, I'm not done lecturing. I brought you guys here the diagram of the air suspension. And yes, it consists of a lot of components and they all involved and they all have to function in order to this thing maintain its height. Otherwise it will drop down in limp mode and tell you, no, we're not going out today. But that's a normal discovery flaw. This circuitry in here behind this is really not that difficult and complicated. It is easy to maintain it and all the components are extremely reliable, including the air shocks on the four corners. The biggest problem is that there is zero maintenance done on this over the time. For example, because people do all kind of repairs, and when I say people, I mean maintenance shops, in the course of these repairs, they damage the hose system. And it will cause a minute leak, and this minute leak will have some consequential damages sooner or later. For example, if you have a very tiny leak, your compressor runs more often, it will wear out your compressor prematurely, and then it's gonna get expensive. But if you maintain this system, if you do some basic checks on it, and you react if it acts up right away, and you don't ignore it, it is easy to maintain. It is made out of basically three valve blocks installed underneath the vehicle, a couple of hoses, an air tank, and an air compressor. It's not that difficult. For example, if your car is down on the ground when you come out in the morning, okay, the easiest way to diagnose what is wrong is to raise it up in the fully extended mode, pull the fuse in the fuse compartment, and let it sit overnight. And when you come out in the morning, you will see which side is limping down. Is it the entire front axle? Is it only one wheel? And out of that, you can already say which of these valves is stuck, and then you can replace easily that particular valve. I could lecture now another hour and a half about the system and what this all is and does, but I will spare you that. What is maybe more interesting is to race your vehicle against the mall crawler. From the bottom down up or? I put mine into excess height. Yeah. There we go. Oh. Yeah, and now you put yours in excess height. I need to turn the emergency lights on. That's that, all. By the way, one of the dumbest things on the Discovery 4, you don't see it during daylight. Yes, yeah. in the other day we got into a bad situation on the Autobahn and I was looking for the emergency light switch. It's in every vehicle on this planet, a big red button. Yeah. And here, I knew it is somewhere in the center, but I was in panic mode and I didn't find it. I was pushing everything. And you have to lower it down first. You want to have equivalent starting conditions. I don't know. Okay, what you doing. can't start with an advantage. You hold the Land Rover button pushed and the lower switch. And you push but you land. can push the Land you Rover push. button. <laughs> There we go. Wow, look at that. Cool. But I have to 
to see how to, how to do that on mine. I think on mine I have to push. Yeah, it's going you have to reboot it. One, two, three. And hold it. Oh, I didn't hold it. You have to hold it, of course. <laughs> okay, we gotta do it uh, again. Two, three. Small crawl, I go and do it again. One, what? two, three. <laughs> yours is now up. And mine? Look, mine doesn't even go that high. Yeah, because yours is a mall crawler. Okay, maybe I'm winning in the back. Yours is definitely higher than mine. I still have it that high. Yeah, and this... I don't even have my badass tires on. <laughs> When we raise it up now and your car stops, you have to push the button combination again to get into the second height. Yours is even lower than mine now. Yes, because it's... It goes higher and it is lower. It's badass. Mall crawler. <laughs> Two, three. <laughs> so this is definitely one point for the off-road rig. Zero points, small crawl. It is possible to do certain modifications to your air suspension. You can use your Gap 2D tool to adjust the height setup of the vehicle easily. If you do feel that the air suspension system is not reliable for your use case, like going through the Simpson Desert or something, then it makes sense to upgrade the system with an emergency override. You just put in a bunch of check valves and a bunch of valves. This is all metric six millimeter tubing. You hose it all up and then you have a pressure regulator somewhere and you can manually open and close the air in your shock. So if you would get into a bind, as long as your airbag isn't broken in the shock, you would just override your air suspension. That is something I've seen people do that. Um, for emergency use. In my opinion, the worst possible thing you can do is remove the air suspension out of a Discovery 3. It's more difficult to remove and more expensive to remove than it is to fix and maintain. That's for sure. I wanted to lecture like two minutes about this and now it's what? 20? Does a new Bronco have um, air suspension? I don't think so, no. Bronco does not come with air suspension, I believe. Did you guys see my new DAB Plus receiver? If you want to upgrade your mall crawler with DAB Plus, that's actually possible. Land Rover has that available and it costs you about what? Between 400 and 600 pounds. And what I did is I installed this thing here for 40 pounds. Um, I say pounds because it's a UK system. Really easy to install. And now I got actually DAB plus in here. I have DAB plus on my in my car. Oh look at that. No battery. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Highway 200 again made in the UK and it takes a moment until it has good reception and then all I have to do here is go into my music and it shifts to auxiliary and now I got actually DAB plus radio. I think it even looks good. Yeah, if you guys are interested, we'll make a video about it. I didn't have DAB Plus, and that was one reason we always took her car, and I want to use the mall crawler more. It's such an expensive car, and we're not getting any use out of it. Yep. Item number two, what we would not change on our Discovery 3. Very simple. Upgrading the style to a Discovery 4. That is the second biggest sin on the planet if you do that. If you have the feeling you have to upgrade a Discovery 3 to make it closer to a mall crawler, then I really feel sorry for your wallet, okay? This is the wrong decision. The Discovery 3 is a way, way cooler vehicle than a Discovery 4. It simply is because it's older, because it has more style. It mixes in less on the street. A Discovery 4 is a modern looking vehicle. It, it has equivalent look, but it has definitely with those design features, what they put in, especially with the facelifts, it has the small crawler touch. Got these clear rear lights. It got these LED um, designed headlights in it with that, you know, like modern vehicles have. They are great. They look nice. 
but there is in my opinion and this is always my opinion here Christian from LR time and I think Vera shares that opinion oh yeah there is no reason why you would have to upgrade this look to a later model on your Discovery 3 that is that is definitely something we would not do I don't say it looks better okay it looks cooler yeah. There's a big difference between those looks two things. Looks more badass. Yeah. yeah. What is the prettiest thing you see here? I mean, there is no reason to get rid of these lights yeah. from this car and put in these lights. They are a nice design, but they're not cooler. If you got this, don't put in this. My opinion. Now let's go to the front. Yes. 16 years old. Going on 17. Going on 17. Here, oh. so eight years old, about, yeah? Depends on... It's a December 2013. It, it might be, I'm not sure. But even if you upgrade everything, look how the bumper has the small crawler shape. And look how this bumper has the off-road shape. Yeah. Okay, but if you would upgrade a well-equipped and good condition Discovery 3 to this look, it might really raise your value that it makes financially sense to do it. This is an upgrade I've seen done that this yellow is removed, but I gotta say, there is nothing wrong with this yellow yeah. either. You don't really want to mess, I mean, we mess enough with yeah. that car. I mean, there is not even anything wrong with a little tiny 16 year old light bulb like this. Yeah. Okay, I think this looks really, really classy. <laughs> it could yeah. be a Hyundai. It's if a I show you this picture, and ask you what vehicle is that, you'd be struggling. Yeah. If I show anyone this picture and ask what vehicle is it, you bet I get the right answer. I have to turn out the light, otherwise I'm going to have those battery problems. <laughs> Christian has. <laughs> Good. Okay. The mall crawler threatens you way more often than the Discovery 3 with weird messages, okay? But the sound is a little bit dimmed. Yeah, it's a little quieter, so you don't get that shock what you get when you drive around in the Discovery 3. You hear the ping because the temperature drops, but you think your engine ceased stop because it's the same ping. Versus the mall crawler actually has the possibility to adjust the sounds in volume so you can make that ping more quiet. That's There are many advantages of this vehicle, no doubt. Yeah, but. Item number three, what we would not change on our two discoveries. It's shaking. It's a diesel engine. Oh, okay. Okay. And that is... I forgot. Engine mapping. Oh, remapping. We're talking about diesel engines here. This vehicle is the SD V6 with 255... No with 256 horse, Vera got the 2.7 liter TD V6 with 190 horse. None of these two vehicles need a engine mapping. Keep your hands away from any ideas of trying to remap this engine. It's not gonna do you any good. It's not gonna take less fuel. It's not gonna get you better acceleration. It's not gonna extend the life of this engine. It's going to reduce the amount of money you have in your wallet and it's going to be making you feel like it was the reason once your engine died. If you let your engine just die without doing it, at least you don't think you cost it. <laughs> don't do an engine remapping on these vehicles. Don't spend any money towards that. There is no proof anywhere on the internet that this did anything good for anybody. And the people who've done it, and you can see some qualified people who are honest about this, and then they did a review after a couple of months, and they come back saying, well, I sometimes feel like it's doing something, but I can't really show you proof. Like it's not cutting out 0 0.3 seconds on the XL. <laughs> on Vera's car, we're talking about a vehicle which is 2.65 tons um, with a 190 horse engine. Trust me, it's not cutting that much life out of you um, if it takes a second longer to get to 60. Now, I do have to say that the difference between the 3 liter TDV6 with 245 horse and the SDV6 with 256 horse is only the mapping. 
and it may be possible to change the mapping of a 245 horse to make it the SDV6 version. I don't know that. You have to ask someone in the UK. Um, but even if you do that, it won't be the same vehicle because it would still miss the transmission. Okay, so it will not give you that big of a benefit. Don't do any remapping. It's not worth it. It's too risky. That engine is already sensitive. Okay, mm -hmm. it already penalizes you for doing anything wrong if you don't give it the right oil. Okay, if you don't read it a story every night when it goes to bed. If you don't drive it warm. You know, if you don't dress it in a warm coat when you're out there. The engine will be mad at you and it will penalize you sooner or later. And the worst thing you can do is remapping and make that thing worse, okay? That's like putting it on steroids. <laughs> I don't know if I say now. What happened? The mall crawler decided <laughs> to wipe the windows for us, okay? It does that all on its own, okay? I'm sorry, I have to let the engine run a little bit because it complained twice over the battery with our playing around. Item number four, we would never modify on our discovery. And that is, very simple, an engine swap. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, every video we make, we get a couple of car ends. The engine sucks. I mean, we're talking about the diesel engine. Do an LS swap. Do a swap, do an engine swap, or even do an LS swap, okay? There might be people on this planet who are able to do an engine swap on a discovery but I am not one of those. And I do know where my wrenches are, but in no way in the world I would trust myself to do an engine swap, okay? In the USA, an engine swap is called an LS swap because you always swap against an LS, at least when you watch YouTube, there is no other engine. Why? Because an LS is such an extremely universal and reliable and simple and powerful engine. It takes basically a little bit of gasoline, I don't know, maybe one cable, and you have to connect an exhaust muffler, and then you're done. The engine will run in your vehicle. In a Discovery, it is a completely different story. I'm gonna consider this vehicle having a fully integrated engine, which means this engine is like a heart of a vehicle. And if you would wanna do a heart transplant, and you do something wrong, none of the other organs will still work. So it is technically extremely difficult. There's one guy in the UK who put a TD V8 out of a Range Rover Sport into a Discovery, replacing a six cylinder with an eight cylinder. And that is already a demanding story on its own. And those cars share some commonality in the platform. But there is, for me, and there might be people who are able to do that, no way on the planet that I would be able to swap either the diesel engine against the gasoline engine of any kind, including LS, including putting a three liter into a 2.7 liter chassis. Item number four. Yeah, but you got to talk about the ECU that it's not top though. Open yours. Hey, it's raining. Okay, you have to open it all the way. Yeah, but it's broken. Oh, <laughs> we didn't change the gas struts. You bought new ones? Yes. Are they here? Yes. Then let's put them in quickly. Here they are. Let's hope they fit. Oh, very nice. Stand over there and hold it up. Put these in quickly, at least one of them, so we can look at the engine. How look much what he you, still didn't do. How much did you pay for those? 23 euros, I think. I'm using my Swiss army knife. <laughs> To replace yeah, them. you guys had those. Okay. Everybody needs a Swiss Army knife. This is called a Toyota tool because oh. it fixes everything on a Toyota. <laughs> you don't know how to do it. My Swiss Army knife does that on its own. You know, all I got to do is hold it in my hand. Okay, now it's heavier. Yes. Yeah? All I got to do is push it on. <laughs> okay, so now it stays up. You sure? Yes, this is good. Oh my god, now. mall crawler has a cover on. Same engine, mall crawler has two turbochargers and this one has only one turbocharger. This one has a little bit less of a volume. What they did is they upgraded the stroke and the bore by a few millimeters to get the three liters on a already weak constructed engine, so very questionable. But it got more power. Now, 
engines look like this. They are fully integrated and they're not easy to swap because all the accessories on this engine, including the ECU control, is buried deeply inside here and you just can't take another engine and put it in here. You have to get your power steering to work. You have to get your steering components still somewhere. You have to get your AC to run. You have to get your vacuum pump to run and all that is driven by that engine. And you would have to find something compatible and then you would still have a huge problem with the ECU because the ECU is fully integrated. This engine talks with all kinds of sensors to the rest of the vehicle so that the right control module knows what's going on, so that the ABS module knows what's going on, so that the individual transmission components know what's going on. So there is a lot of high-speed bus communication. And if you take that engine out and you replace it with an LS engine, all that will be gone and you will have a lot of flashing lights which you have to fix by putting a sticker over them. <laughs> they give you a engine cover. Okay, this is a piece of plastic what costs the manufacturer about two euros fifty or three dollars or 2.2 pounds and you can put this cover on if you do it the right way. <laughs> You can put this cover on and then that big pile of junk is actually looking nice. But on a Ford Bronco, it appears like they were in such a rush that they missed this. And now when you watch the YouTube videos, what that engine looks like, it seriously looks like a big pile of cables and hoses and stuff. Nobody knows what it is for. Yeah. It doesn't even have that. Okay, first problem. <laughs> yes, I can close it. <laughs> oh yeah, that feels good again. It feels <laughs> like on the mall crawler. We're done, right? Well, we only have four points, but that video will be long enough already. I've written down more. Four items we would not change on our discoveries. Hopefully there was something new for you. If you like this video, please check out our other videos. Think about subscribing. Give it a thumbs up. And in any case, please don't unsubscribe. See you next Sunday. <laughs> Here's a project waiting to happen. Maybe we'll do it this weekend. That's a transmission flash on the Discovery 4. What is this here? Something I Stuff you ordered. Oh, oh my God. God. As a house owner in Germany, that's what you need to run an Ethernet cable. This is a solid granite wall. And if you want to drill through there, you don't need necessarily a drill this long combined with a Hilti. But if you want to drill through this, like this, to get up into another room, so you got the concrete ceiling and the wall, you need a, a one meter drill with a SDS Max coupling, okay? This is the large size, not the small wimpy size for people, you know, living in normal homes. And we actually do have a Hilti and not a cheap oh, Chinese. Yeah. Um... We, got a, <laughs> yeah. we got a real Hilti. We got the serious repair coming, which we didn't get to. Um, so that will be an oil pump change on Vera's Land Rover Discovery 3. And we're going to change the flow plugs. flow plugs, which is a science project on its own. We're going to change all sorts of idler pulleys. Um, we're going to change timing belt front and rear and of course oil. Because we wrecked Vera's brake switch. No, we did not. You did. Yeah, okay. So we'll have to put in a new brake light switch because yeah. hers, uh, one contact was broken off. Um, that will be no video. These pieces here, there is nothing important. Just the small Land Rover items we need for the repair I just mentioned. Now we are still harvesting our firewood right now and we got less time to work on the discovery and that's why we only did like a talking video. Yep. But at least we did not make any coffee, okay? <laughs> So Robin continued working on his fruit basket out of steel. And he made the basket so far. Here he's got the bananas forged. And he's got some apples forged. 
and then he's got here one salad. Are yeah, the grapes are really good. They're heavy. They're heavy. He he even bought some vegetables here, so he know what they look like, and then he made this one. You know, other people paint fruit, and Robin is welding his fruit and forging. 